All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I just wanted to briefly introduce myself because I'm new to the role at Via Sport, uh, but I'm manager of sport development here now. Um, my background is working in uh, Paralympic sport for BC Wheelchair Sports, and uh, I'm also the technical delegate for wheelchair rugby at the Paralympics. Uh, this coming summer, if it happens, when it happens, fingers crossed for me. Um, but I'm really uh, thrilled to sort of bring this uh, online community together. Uh, I know there's a lot of delivery happening right now. Katie is always informing me about statistics and we, we're doing awesome. And I just wanted to reach out to uh, this, this community uh, through Laura and her expertise, uh, along with Jen and Dave, to uh, maybe support the community a little bit better and, and see where we can uh, create the best possible group of LFs for online delivery in the, in the country. So uh, welcome and uh, thank you for being here. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to the uh, Slack community that we're building. This was Laura's great idea. And uh, I think it'll help each course, uh, each deliverer uh, manage exactly what they need to get out of each session that they're delivering, as well as create collaborative online communities where you can talk about technology, um, we can, you can talk about uh, pitfalls and best practices and tools that we can share. And I think it's going to make an exceptional um, change to what we do here. Uh, and hopefully you will too. So uh, that said, if everybody can log into the Slack uh, and populate uh, what you want to get out of the session in the online delivery uh, box, that'd be great. Uh, then it'll give us a little bit of a framework to um, either build this session out or future sessions. So uh, that would be amazing. While you guys are doing that, uh, I'll introduce uh, Laura Watson, who has graciously uh, offered to host this, and uh, and then Dave Hill and uh, Jen Schutz, who will be uh, tag teaming it with her. She's got some great plans uh, through the Miro board that she'll introduce you to, and we can follow along and create a, a great experience for everybody. So uh, we'll follow up with a survey uh, after this and let, let us know how we did uh, and what you'd like to see out of future sessions like this. So uh, thanks, and I'll turn it over to Laura. I you were going to be a lot longer. I wasn't ready to go yet. I wasn't mentally prepared. So um, Concise, Laura. <laughs> I thought that was a good half hour of your part. What happened here? All right. Hi, folks. It's, uh, it's nice to see everyone. Uh, this is not just a, a brainstorm from me. This is Jen and Dave and Kevin and I have had quite a few good chats and Jen Falloon wasn't able to be here today due to, I don't know, family commitments or I guess more important priorities. I know, ridiculous. Um, we did really want tonight to be, you know, when we talked about what the idea tonight, this afternoon to be uh, just a chance to get back together with all the learning facilitators too. We've always had a really good community of LFs in BC and we, we just really wanted a chance to connect again. So when we said in the email that went out ahead of time, make sure you have an adult beverage, we actually originally thought this was gonna be like a 7 p.m. thing. So that kind of made a bit more sense. However, for those of us who are still willing to enjoy beverage in the middle of the afternoon, cheers to everyone. So let's have a big group cheers. Okay, if you have water or anything else, lovely seeing everyone. Um, If you did not get a chance in Zoom, uh, if you can update your name, it looks like almost everybody has just to your first name, last name, and then where you're coming in from today, that would be great. We, uh, our goal of, of this was to model a bunch of different platforms for online delivery, but that goes with a big disclaimer that you would never use a lot of platforms in online delivery. So you might get a little bit inundated uh, with platforms tonight, and I know we're recording this if you wanna come back to it, any of the resources and tools we send out are going to be in Slack as well as our, our kind of main channel to, to go from here. Um, I'm going to do, in a second, I'm going to pass it over to Dave and Jen to say a welcome, which they were fully prepared to do, so they're excited for that. But since they weren't really prepared, I'm going to quickly do a screen share so you can see what Kevin's referring to with Slack. So if you hadn't had a chance to go in yet or you haven't seen that link, uh, I see a few comments going in, which is awesome. We're playing around right now in this online delivery channel and just posting comments about what you're looking to get out of tonight or what the goal is for you. Um, you can post it as new comments or you can also reply to thread, which you can figure out because Slack is a complicated system, but very effective once you figure it out. And I know as an LF, I think this is going to be an awesome platform for things like uh, when they're looking for somebody to be able to facilitate NCCP basic mental skills, for example. Uh, they can just be a sport can send a notice out in here to all the mental skills LFs asking if anybody can do it. 
or to be able to go into MED. I think I posted, actually, there's already a conversation going just about challenges and, and what people have found with doing MED online delivery. So um, should be a good platform for us, uh, hopefully. Should be fun to use. And if you're new to Slack and it's already exhausting you, totally understandable. Please reach out to anybody to be able to help out. Uh, Dave, I think you had something important to say. <laughs> yes, there you go. My my microphone is unmuted and uh, I am here. I was just actually on Slack trying to uh, catch up with the, everything that we're doing. So yeah, just welcome everybody. It's uh, great to see everybody again. And um, I think one of the things that's exciting for me is just recognizing the uh, breadth of the uh, of experience um, that we have in BC for a lot of our delivery of NCCP. Um, I've enjoyed planning out a little bit of this with uh, Laura and Jen and uh, Kevin. Um, so we've got a little piece of uh, some activities that we're going to be uh, doing a little bit later on. Um, but I think it's um, hopefully going to help us kind of one, see what types of uh, tools may be available uh, to us as LFs, um, but also maybe answer some of your questions that you're typing away in Slack. So thanks for uh, having me here, uh, Laura. Definitely keep me in line and uh, try not to make too much fun of me. Okay. I don't remember agreeing to that, so I will not. Uh, Jen Schatz. So apparently I'm here to be the peacekeeper between the two other siblings. Um, so welcome everyone. We're, we're excited to, uh, to get everybody together. And I really like Kevin's initiative to be able to sort of start this lab and um, share everybody's knowledge. Because I think this is, when we start to use Mira, you'll really see that it, it's a wonderful way for us to make sure that we can collaborate and use everybody's ideas. Because I think the the notion of tonight is is to or this afternoon is to really make sure that everyone is able to share sort of what are their struggles, what are some common struggles, what could we do to fix them, and get ideas from around the province and from different things that pe different people have used. So I'm I'm looking forward to brainstorming with you and uh, sharing experiences with you. So yeah, welcome everybody. Glad you could make it. Awesome. This is, sounds like a well-scripted machine. Eh? It's like we spent hours planning this. I'm so proud of us. All right. Um, so we're, we're in Zoom. That's our starting point. We're going to cover four platforms tonight. Again, this is supposed to be social. It's supposed to be fun. And it's going to be uh, not just two-way, but multiple ways. We're going to break off into groups and do a few different things. And the whole goal really is to introduce a few online tools, get more comfortable with them, um, just open up our, our ideas and get sharing from each other in terms of how things are going. I know some people spend like 12 hours a day now on their computers and online video platforms. And some people are going, I don't know how to deliver NCCP online, but I need to. So I got to figure it out. And we've got everybody in between. So wherever, whatever stage you're at in that, all good. Um, right now we're in, we're in Zoom, obviously, similar to a number of platforms. Before we jump out of here and start to really confuse everybody, I thought just a couple of quick Zoom tips. And I'm going to do the same thing that I do when I run online sessions for work. Um, and just ask that people uh, mute their phones, but fortunately I have the magical powers to do so. Um, and if you have any of your own, just if you use Zoom or any online video platforms, if you want to put them in the chat, we're just going to keep the conversation going. Uh, no, that's not right. We're not going to use the chat in Zoom. We're going to use the Slack chat about online delivery. Correct. I need other people to keep me in line. Um, so with Zoom, few things that tend to make Zoom less exhausting uh, for people. One is turn off self view. So if you are in a meeting right now and you are looking at your own face, you can click on those three. If you hover over it, that little blue box comes up with the three little dots is click on hide self view. Uh, it is not normal that we go through meetings or anything in life where we stare at ourselves for long periods of time. It's exhausting. Highly recommend turning off self view uh, as much as you need to fix your hair. If you need to do that, just go elsewhere and fix it in the mirror. Uh, make your meetings much easier. The other thing is doing things like turning on speaker view. So up in the top right, you're probably looking at gallery view right now where you can see everybody. I'm not gonna suggest you go to speaker view because that means you would just be looking at me, but it is much easier just to look at one person uh, versus an entire platform of people. 
and I can hear things going off in Slack at the same time because I have alerts on. So I hope there's other good ideas being shared in there. Um, other quick things are just getting people to sign in with the right names, setting expectations going into this ahead of time. And, and that's what Jen and Dave and I really talked about leading into this was if we're going to do a session about how to do online delivery, we really should model some of the best practices. So we are attempting to do this well. Uh, and right from the email that went out ahead of time to be able to say to people, um, this is what you're, you're expecting tonight and enjoy a, an adult beverage and please be dressed from the waist up. Uh, really just sets the tone for where we're going to go for the evening. So if you didn't read that, then I caught your reaction. I know you're just hearing that for the first time, Jody. Uh, Tom just asked a really good question. I clearly have the gallery view on, so I can see you all at well. Um, is about turning video off. One of the other good things you can do is if you're delivering NCCP work, especially, and you have an entire gallery of people in front of you, is let people, when they're in a big room, turn video off. So if you're doing a mini, mini lecture or mini facilitation, so right now, um, I would say, why not take a break? We're doing a social thing, so you're not allowed to, and I'm not going to let you. You're obviously allowed to do whatever you want. But uh, is setting the standards ahead of time, just having a screen up that comes up first, saying here's kind of the Zoom rules for today. If we're in a big session in the plenary, turn your video off. When you're in breakout rooms, make sure you turn it on. Or if you're speaking and sharing, turn it on. Um, just things that make Zoom easier to manage. The other thing is if people have to step away is asking them just to mute, obviously, but turn video off too. So uh, interested to see if there's, I know Dave and Jen are both looking at the chats coming up too. Um, and we are defaulting, it's important to note to, to a desktop or laptop platform today, because that's what we're working off of. This is obviously a little bit trickier if you're on an iPad or a phone. Um, so we will do our best to help you out on that. Before we confuse things, any questions on the world of Zoom or anybody want to share it? This is a, this is a group session. Thoughts in terms of what you want to be able to do with Zoom or best practices, things that have worked well for you. Candace, we're not, uh, this is recorded, so you can definitely get the recording, right, Kevin? We're going to share the recording after? Mandatory head nod. That means Kevin wasn't listening because he just heard right Kevin into this. I know what's going on. Um, yeah, we're going to share the recording, and then that's sort of the intention of keeping the conversation going in Slack is that then we have it later. Don't take notes. No, just enjoy, enjoy. Sit back and relax and have fun. Candace, stop taking you, notes. You just, you just yammered off so many great ideas and I don't do any of those things and I can't remember the first one you said. So yeah, I guess. Okay. So take notes. Maybe that might Thank be a you. good idea. <laughs> uh, See, that's why we're recording it. One piece. Um, I only discovered this recently is if you're, if it looks, if your screen looks really cluttered, then you can hide the non video participants and that cleans everything up really nicely too. So you can focus on the people that are, you know, kind of engage with the video rather than the people that are just kind of blank. And Chris, how do you do that? Yeah, same. So you click on someone that does not have their video on and the three buttons and it says hide non-video participants and it cleans things up nicely. You got it. Yeah. Huge benefit. And Laura, um, just, just a, yeah, a question around the uh, recording because I know, and I haven't been able to do this on my own Zoom, but um, because of certainly people wanting to have anonymity uh, on the recording. Um, is there the possibility of hiding people's uh, videos uh, when you record? So when they play back, their videos aren't there. I don't know, because actually, if anybody else can jump in on this, the, the stuff I do through work, we actually never record because of confidentiality, which was a oh. good point that we never asked everybody about that. <laughs> so hopefully you're okay with being recorded. Otherwise, maybe turn your video off. Um, does anybody know if there's an option for that? Dave, you have to, um, before you record, you, if you are the speaker, you, you click on spotlight video and then only your face and your little one by two inch version of you will show in the recording when you record. That's what somebody, I do. For, and if somebody uh, else comes on, Shauna, does that mean that they get spotlighted? No, I think if I, if I set it on myself, if I have um, administrative controls, if I haven't given controls over to other speakers and I, I highlight myself, pin video and or click on highlight video just on mine, I think only mine is going to be there for the whole, um, for the whole conference or the whole uh, call. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I have been on calls where people have just said, "Hey, if you're not comfortable with yourself being recorded, um, 
definitely, you know, hide yourself. Okay. And of course, you know, if you are hiding your video, just make sure that you know it's on so that if you start doing something like standing up and doing a dance that, uh, <laughs> you know. Not that that would ever happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do not intend to dance for today, Chris, for the record. Chris again. Um, yeah. We were just doing a pro D uh, thing on last Friday on the 20th. And they, saw, they told us to not record because in their opinion, and I know it's their opinion, they needed to get, and for privacy, they needed to get written consent from everybody in order to record and share. And that was written consent and not just verbal assent. So that's just something to think about too. Which is what we did before this. Yeah. You all remember. Uh, there was a quick question in the chat about the Slack platform. So if you did... If you haven't yet, it's worth opening up Chrome or Safari or whatever else you're on because we're going to be using um, a web browser for a lot of this at the same time as Zoom and we'll try our best to talk you through it. But if you did get into Slack, we're in this channel called Online Delivery. Um, so that's what we're using. It's an open channel. So if there's a hashtag, it's an open channel. Anybody can access it of the via sport LFs, of the multi-sport LFs in BC. Uh, and that's where we're posting comments. And I will give invisible bonus points. I forgot to mention there's a lot of bonus points handed out tonight. They go towards your overall score at the end, which means nothing and is based on nothing and you won't find out. If you want an invisible bonus point, if you figure out how to go in and reply to thread, as I have to Kevin's message here, if I click on view thread, you can see it on the right hand side, you get four and a half invisible bonus points, which is a pretty good start, you have to say. So if you go in to the online delivery channel, and you reply to somebody's thread, Kevin's or somebody else's, you get four and a half invisible bonus points. We're gonna see who does it first. So far, some people thinking it's a good idea, but not yet doing it. Oh, we have a winner, who won? Nicole, Nicole won, she won a prize, four and a half bonus points. All right, because we're generous, anybody else who does it also gets four and a half bonus points. Um, replying to thread is a really easy way to keep the conversation going and keep it clean. So if I were to go back to Dave's comment here and want to have a conversation and reply to him, obviously it's distracting if it goes in this channel. Sorry for doing the zoom around really quick with my cursor. Uh, it's much easier if I just reply directly to his message. So quick Slack recommendation uh, in that world. The other thing that's fun about Slack is that we have all these direct messages. So you can just randomly direct message other people uh, and send them top secret things that you want no one else to know about that are very important to the world of facilitating in BC. Alternatively, it might be a good way to find somebody to co deliver with if you ever need to. I'm going to, uh, while I'm on screen share, I did this for another purpose too. So while you're looking at your screen, um, you should currently have, uh, you'll see my screen share on the left hand side, I believe. And on the right hand side, you'll see either my face or the gallery view of faces. You can scroll back and forth. So you can actually make my screen share quite a bit smaller by scrolling that line that's in between and so that you can see more people's faces or make the speaker bigger if you want to, uh, which a lot of people don't know about Zoom. So another random fun tip, Candace, that can go on the list since you're tracking. Okay. Yeah, I missed that. Totally missed that. I feel like- <laughs> <laughs> Too much, too fast? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm seeing a couple nods and I have a tendency to do that. So too much, too fast? <clears throat> okay. Definitely a learning curve here. Okay. The good news is there's lots of time because the quiz isn't actually happening. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> that's just a secret in case you thought there was a quiz. Um, so just watching the time and we do, we actually have a lot maybe to do today. I don't know if we do, but I'm going to introduce our first tool that we're going to use. It's called Miro and I'm going to introduce it by screen sharing and showing you what it is and then giving you access to it. We'll just mute everyone. Um, so similar to when we give instructions to kids, we don't give them the balls and then try and teach them what to do with it. I'm not going to give you the access to this yet, but this is going to be a platform that you are all in a moment going to have a link to share. So Miro, if you look up at the top left, M-I-R-O, is a free online collaboration platform. Um, in a moment, everybody's going to have a link that you can follow and you will appear in here. You can see Jen Schutz is this little uh, peachy, peachy Jen icon moving around. So Jen has access to it. You can see Dave, <laughs> Dave Hill is this green icon. And Kevin has not signed in intentionally to show he's a guest drafter. 
So when you get the link, you will all come in as guests. It will be very confusing because there will be a whole bunch of cursors flying around. The instruction, once you get in here, is you are going to zoom in, everybody watching? You're going to zoom in on the board up above the V. So here's the V sport, which somebody has moved. So you're gonna move up above the V to this little uh, sticky note platform. Sorry, you're gonna zoom into it and you have a challenge. Your challenge is to add your name to one of these sticky notes. I don't know why I'm having a terrible time zooming in. Clearly my uh, trackpad cursor is not going well. So the same way I have your name to a sticky note, where you're located, and you have to change two things about the sticky note. So you would do that by clicking on it and you'll see all these, you can change the color, you can change the font, anything else. Okay, I'm gonna keep on screen share so that nobody gets stuck, but I am going to send out in the chat the link to the mural board. So you should be able to follow that link to end up where we all are today. So let's see who we can get in. Um, as you're doing that and following that link, I wanna point out that one of the goals of today was to create everything that if you are on say a tablet right now and can't do any of this, you can just watch and follow along. Uh, I see a lot of cursors flying in now, which is fun. People are probably moving some other stuff around, messing with the screen. I don't know what's going on here. I'm gonna assume Dave did that. Um, so come on in, write your name on a board. So just stick on a clicky note when you, <laughs> stick on a clicky note click on a sticky note when you find it add your name and we're going to give a few minutes for people to do that somebody has made their own sticky note it's very enormous looks like gail well done gail gail i'm going to move your enormous sticky note if you're okay with it just because it's over the board So a bit of a frenzy free for all. I promise this is gonna get a little bit more organized in a moment. Somebody's really reorganizing the size of this board, which is an interesting strategy. So free platform, you can sign in, you can not sign in either way. Uh, signing in really for the purpose of this, uh, today's activity would only add your name to your icon. So no need, um, unless you already have an account. I see Jody Holly in there, well done. And so asking everybody just to go in, this is really a, a bit of a guide. Whenever you're introducing a new tool, you want to, as we know as coach developers, start off with a very low risk activity. Right now, this would be low risk. There's no success, there's no fail. There is whatever just happened uh, to the board, uh, which has moved up for some reason. I am going to lock this board, I think, uh, just so it doesn't get moved anymore. So if you are looking for the board, uh, scroll up. The sticky notes are moved higher. If you have already accomplished uh, and finished this task where you got your name onto a sticky note, well done. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, but you're welcome to zoom out and just kind of play around on the board. So again, if you're just watching my screen, you can uh, you can do that. If you have access yourself, which it looks like quite a few people got in, you're welcome to play around as well. Down on the bottom right of your screen is a bit of a roadmap. I'm not sure why mine's blank. I think I've hit something. Uh, there it is that will show you, kind of orient you to the uh, the entire screen so you know what's going on. Okay, we're going to get 30 more seconds and then we're going to carry on in life. If you didn't get this done, all good, no worries. Any thoughts or comments about what you're playing with so far or if people have done this before? And you're welcome to speak out loud. You don't have to have to always chat. Well, I can't see the, I can't. that little board because there's just everybody's all over the place. Too many? Yeah, I can't see my name. I mean, I, it's just there's just tons of people and so... So the key, my suggestion would be the more you zoom in, the easier it is to manage. Um, so just get in as close as you can. If I'm gonna pick this sticky note, for example, under Jeff, uh, the more I zoom in, the more it, easier it is just to manage working just on this note and not get distracted by all those things flying around. Laura, mm -hmm. it's Catherine. Hi um, Catherine. I, I just got here and um, how I'm, I've got my mural set up on my computer. Um, how do I connect it with your particular board 
There is, if you scroll up in the chat, Catherine, and I'm going to get Jen or Dave to, uh, to repost the link again, just so it's more frequent, but it's in the chat for the Zoom meeting, uh, the link to the specific board. Okay, that might be difficult because I am using a different computer for that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Laura, just so everybody's playing around, I think one of the things that I'd be curious to know uh, from you um, or others would, would just be how many of you actually function off of two screens when you're facilitating perhaps online or even Laura within this? I mean, how do you see uh, being able to do this on one screen or two screens? Uh, I'll jump in just because you asked me, but I would love to hear other people's and I think I'm probably a bit more unique. I only function off a laptop. I don't have a second screen. And that's because uh, back in the real world before things went sideways, I fly a lot. And so I just I can't switch between sometimes having things that I can do on two screens and sometimes on one. So um, but I'm pretty, pretty comfortable, I guess, with flipping around screens and knowing what I'm what I'm doing. So I think I would be a bit of a different case in that situation. Definitely, I think it would be easier on two screens. Anybody else have thoughts though? I'd like people to chime in on that one. Um, I try to Hi. have the, oh boy. Go ahead, Jody. I try to have the platform on the screen that my video camera is on so that when I'm looking at what other people are doing, it sort of looks like I'm looking at them. And then I have the, the coach workbook, like for NCCP stuff, I have the coach workbook and the reference material. And, you know, I, I have a hard copy of my learning facilitator guide because I'm old and technology bothers me. But the, so I put the, the hard copy of the LF guide underneath my like little platform that I have for my laptop. So I can like look down and read without having to look away. And then all the stuff that I check when everyone else is doing something is <laughs> to the side over here. I think most people are probably in the boat of the, having the hard copy stuff too. And I know Viasport just sent out hard copies of a lot of things for people, which was probably pretty helpful. I, um, so I always use two screens now. And the one thing I've been doing for a while, again, Laura, before when we were allowed to travel, was um, I would just travel with my laptop, but I would bring my HDMI cable and I would plug in and use the TV as my second screen. So um, that's sort of been handy. So I've actually, I've taught a class using three screens once, my big monitor, my computer one, and the TV, and it was awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I did an online phys ed class that way, and that way I could see all of the kids on the nice. gallery view on the uh, TV. It was great. Um, my recommendation, I will say for all of this is always just do whatever works for you. So if you work best with two screens, do two screens. If you need three and a, an HDMI card cord to a TV, then use three. Uh, and same with, we had a, a fun chat leading into this about what the best online platform is. And the answer is if you are best with Zoom, use Zoom. If you like Adobe Connect, use Adobe Connect. Um, I know that there needs to be consistency when it comes to uh, the organization we're working for. So when we represent Viasport, obviously all of us are are following the standards and guidelines of Viasport. But I think just when you have the opportunity is do what works for you. So if you like the mirror board by the end of this and it works, um, do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. It's a different way. And there's a number of tools. This is just one that we're using. There's a lot of different platforms. So I'm going to get everybody to pause for a second. Um, and what I'm going to do is hide everybody's cursors just to drive people less crazy. Uh, we're going to move into breakouts. So I know Kevin has three breakouts set up. I'm going to explain the activity. And if you're, if you're currently looking at the mural board, maybe flip back to looking at the shared Zoom screen. You can see my screen. This is found down at the bottom under the VIA words. So you can see this board. This is topic one. And the challenge is you're going to have either Dave or Jen or I in the room with you. You are going to zoom into your board. So if you're in group one, you're going to zoom into your board and everybody's going to contribute, you are looking at what the question is at the top, setting the ground rules for successful online delivery. So in your breakout room, you get your own board you're gonna fill out. When it comes to NCCP delivery and we're making adjustments to deliver online, what would you modify? What would you adapt? 
this is a pretty standard brainstorming template used in a number. It's not specific to NCCP or the activity we're doing. It's just an idea of how to be able to use different tools. Um, if you are frustrated already by Miro, it's too much zooming around of cursors and it's a lot looking at, then first of all, take a deep breath, all is well, you don't have to. You're welcome to let just one person lead in terms of adding content, or you can just step back and kind of watch the screen share because Jen and Dave and I in our breakout rooms will screen share. So you can either be in the Miro board or you can just watch the screen share as well. So I'm going to stop for a moment and just do a quick check. Are we... Doing okay? Let's see a reaction on the screen. If you're doing okay, thumbs up. Uh, if you feel like crying, you can use that icon. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's supposed to be a laughing icon, but I know what it really means. Uh, if you're terrified, okay. Again, I just wanna keep pointing out that you wouldn't ever over uh, online platform people with a whole bunch of tools at once. This is just to introduce different tools and get a feel for different ways to do things. So, and obviously you wouldn't ever run these if you weren't comfortable with them. Um, I think we're going to do 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the breakout room. Kevin, what's the answer? The answer is whatever you think, Laura. I was so hoping <laughs> that was the answer. That's fantastic. We're going to do 12 and a half minutes is what the timer is going to set at. So when you do go into Zoom breakout rooms, uh, for those who haven't been before, there is a timer you'll see on your screen that tells you how much time is left. When it's done, you get a one minute countdown, which will say you have 60 minutes to come back to the main room. Essentially, that's saying wrap up the conversation so you don't get cut off in the middle of it. Um, and otherwise, it also will come up with something that says leave meeting or return to room. Try and pick return to room versus leave meeting. But if you do get kicked out, you can follow the same link to get back in. All good? Dave, Jen? Um, so I'm going to, before I pass it on to, I forget if, I think it's Dave going yes. next. I just thought I would share the interesting view of the work that was just done. I mean, this group did an amazing job, I have to say. <laughs> this is very impressive. I think this was good collaboration uh, as well as borrowing from other groups. I don't know what happened <laughs> to this. <laughs> now, I did share it's not even four o'clock and I know we said have a drink ahead of time, but like at least somebody in the group could have pulled this together. Uh, but this group really did well, I think, as much as uh, to the extent that another group may have looked at some of your answers and borrowed. So well done on that one. Um, I shared in my room that the, the purpose of this, again, is it's both the discussion we're having and the content we're adding, but it's about playing with the, the tools and understanding it. So in Miro, if you were to click on the left hand side on the three dots, you can see where there's all these kind of templates you can add in mind maps, um, cards, grids. And so these were all just sort of preset ones we just used ahead of time. To introduce, before I pass to Dave uh, and introduce a little bit of another super fun tool which has been moved on me, so I'll go here. In the middle of the P, you don't have to go on your screen. We're gonna use something called Mentimeter, which is another free tool. So if you wanna open another browser window and go to mentimeter.com, or you can do it on, uh, whenever this decides to share, on your phone as well. Uh, this can be on a phone app. You're going to go to menti.com as it says across the top and then you're going to put in this code which you can see if you're looking at my screen at the screen share and you are going to answer the question on the screen. So that's 1910740. That is, is that correct. correct. Dave you sound like a bingo caller like you've done that before. Very <laughs> impressive. And Did you say um, 19? 19, 10, 74, 0. So this is a uh, Mentimeter or menti.com is a uh, external tool. It has nothing to do with Miro board, um, but you can use again, the free version, the basic version works very well. It's basically an online polling tool. There's a number of different ways you can set up polls. This is just a fun one where clearly people are so excited for this session, they don't even know what to do. Uh, I did realize ahead of time, this was set up questionably because it doesn't really tell you like, is this good to be excited or is this just sarcastic? But um, so just a quick little tool to be able to use because I am controlling Mentimeter on the background uh, and I hope you can still see my screen. Mm -hmm. yep. This is what Mentimeter looks like. So that was what my side of that platform looks like. I can very easily, again, remember we're showing you and teaching at the same time, uh, change what the question is, how it's set up. You can download results. 
and all of my Zoom controls are taking over what I'm trying to do. Um, so there's a number of ways you can do these different platforms and move along. So we're going to move to another question. If I can get these tools out of my way. Um, go back to here in my brilliance of ability to share screens. I almost lost you all. Apologies. And I think Dave, before I go to the next question, you're up next, aren't you? Yes, he is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. that's great. Thanks, great. Laura. No problem, um, Dave. Yeah, we're still uh, figuring out my screen share. Uh, I did try to leave you a note there to- uh... I, Oh, I saw your note. It's very big. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make it pretty obvious. Thanks. I do you have it now. I do yep. have it now. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen too. And, you know, just a brief comment on the last exercise. I think that, um, you know, one of the challenges uh, that we had in our group, and just to, to debrief it a little bit before we move on to the other exercise, which I'll be going to, is... is, Dave, is can number you click on hide highlighted changes at the bottom? Because it'll stop, uh, it'll make it a little bit easier to manage. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so just a um, couple of things that came up, and, and this may have come up in other groups, was, you know, half the group have delivered online and half the group haven't delivered online. So one of the questions that, that came up is certainly how do we get the training in order to deliver online? And like a lot of CAC training, it's required to, you know, have the training before you go out and deliver it. But, um, Laura, maybe you might have the answer to that uh, question just for people that haven't actually got the training so far. I actually think that might be a Kevin question, but I won't put Kevin too on the spot since he wasn't around for the original run of this. Uh, you would actually reach out to Kevin and he, if he gets enough people who need to do it, then he would put something together, uh, reach out to CAC and have it delivered would be the answer. Yeah. So contact your friendly neighborhood PTCR man. Yeah, either myself or Katie, we can help you out. Just a quick comment. This is Brian. Um, in terms of the um, um, online LFs, um, I understood that uh, Via Sport was full in terms of the numbers of uh, LFs for online delivery. And uh, because I took my uh, online delivery uh, with uh, Wayne Parrow from CAC, and uh, I'm not on the list for online delivery for Via Sport. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, Katie is managing the list of like how frequently we are delivering and who's available um, within our current list that was already there. Uh, so as we need more capacity, we'll draw on the list further down and look at new training, depending on the, the situation and how much demand there is. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, great question, Brian. Thanks for that. And the other thing that obviously came up was, was just, you know, utilizing the tools and we'll probably debrief that um, you know towards the end and we have saved some time to to do some more group debriefing at the end um, just Laura you made a few comments on how nicely this one was put together uh, as opposed to some of the other groups I just wanted to point out that 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 was my group but I, I will oh. <laughs> I will shout I definitely out. thought it was Jen's and criticized you <clears throat> yeah I, I will shout out that uh, we, we we do have some very high achieving people in the group uh, so <laughs> um, it certainly didn't come despite down their leader my, uh, you know master facilitator skills um, but uh, thank you for for us uh, in my group for doing such a wonderful job Great work, David Hill and friends. <laughs> so moving from that activity over to this next activity, and, you know, I'm just kind of moving myself around. Um, you know, when I'm doing this, and you can see me zooming in and out, it, it, I happen to have a mouse that has a little um, ball on it, so I can use my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. And most of you are kind of figuring out that that's pretty critical to kind of navigating your way around. Um, but what we want to look at is, is just another little activity. And this one is one that obviously Laura's put together as well. Um, but how do we maintain 
the core competencies within our delivery of NCCP. And one of the things that, you know, really hits home to me, uh, having done this for years is, is the different coaches that you get in your workshops. And, you know, I think all of us have probably experienced coaches that, you know, have come in and just said, Hey, I just want the information. Let me get in, let me get out. And, you know, that's it. Um, but one of the things that I think we are trying to do within the NCCP is, is build in uh, the core competencies in our training. And obviously, I mean, linking the training back to the evaluation with hope that many of our coaches may actually go on and do evaluation um, is also critical. So it's never really, I've, I've never really found it as front and center in some of the new modules, it's it's becoming more front and center in the learning facilitator guides. But really, when we deliver NCCP, similar to this workshop tonight, um, are we tapping in to those core competencies? And how do we tap into those core competencies? So this is a bit of a reflective exercise. And if you're looking at the core competencies, well, first of all, I'll just orientate you to the uh, the slide here. So on the, the left hand side, you're you're going to look at online delivery um, versus in person delivery. So an example of leading, uh, a simple example would be that we would name the leader in a group. So when we put a group together, you know, we name the leader. And I'll just type that in to that box. Um, so I can map that out. But then on an online delivery, then how do we really help people understand um, leading or taking a leadership role or you know, doing those types of things? So maybe one of the things that comes to mind is um, breakout rooms that we just experienced. So with this mind mapping exercise, the, the thing that you can do is once you've got one of these baubles, you can look at adding a line. So if, if somebody just wants to go directly into leading and type something off of that, they can add to it. Or if you want to type something off of breakout rooms um, that links to breakout rooms, you can go to the left of that as well over here and you can say okay that links to breakout rooms so our objective in this and we'll give ourselves a few minutes is to try and populate this as much as you can i would just suggest that um, because i don't have you in groups necessarily um, that we go to different competencies so that you can zoom out um, and then go back to different competencies and then start filling this in and identifying on the left hand side, what do you do in an online environment to uh, perhaps have or show valuing as the competency as opposed to face to face. So hopefully that's clear. And we'll just let everybody have a, a bit of time just to play um, and get some of those ideas down and see how big of a map that we can uh, create. Dave, I think Gail had a question. She had her hand up. Yeah. Yes, Gail, go Can ahead. Thanks. Well, with some of the new modules that have been revised, we um, actually don't have the charts anymore to be discussing the core competencies. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of something interesting for, I don't know how much. Gail, they should be in the beginning of all the manuals though. Yeah, but we're not doing a real activity related to it as before. Yeah. It doesn't have the same um, emphasis, uh, I guess I would say, as the older modules. And yeah, just mentioning it. And I don't know how much people are still putting, if they're putting time in to, to do anything related to the activities for it. I find that, they you know, the courses are still quite full and being doing them online takes even a bit more time so it's harder to squish in more
Does well, anybody have a thought in terms of the, with the new modules and the core competence? Dave, you had a really interesting conversation or comment yesterday when, or Tuesday, whenever we were talking about this. I guess my only comment is, is that what we are trying to do obviously throughout the delivery is to tap into every single core competency uh, within the delivery. So as I said at the beginning, the, you know, some of the coaches that I've met that says, hey, just give me the content and I want to get out of here. Um, that doesn't necessarily suit the type of delivery that we want to promote. And, you know, I think there are ways um, without having an intentional activity. And Gail, I agree with you. I mean, there's a lot of those intentional activities that we had in some of the old LF guides. But even I think some of the things that we do within our facilitation, whether it's in person or online, does tap into each of these competencies, which I believe is is really important and, and kind of the nature of an NCCP delivery. Oops. Okay, well, thanks, Dave. I was just curious if there had been more talks about it amongst the, the um, course, you know, developers across the country and, and how much they were still in, incorporating it or not. So thank you. All right, it looks like there's, uh, Dave, this is pretty good. Some of the feedback in here, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm actually playing around with it. I know so. you are, you're not paying attention. You're not, because <laughs> <laughs> I gave everybody it. five minutes just to, to run around. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't believe. Dave, can you maybe speak to different ways that you could, uh, if you were using breakout rooms, have people move between these and relating to things like jigsaw activities we do in the classroom? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to generate, <laughs> generate a few of the ideas as we go along. I mean, it's interesting as we're, we're building this out, how many of these really come to mind, obviously, the interactions, uh, interacting part is is quite a, a large part of what we're trying to do within NCCP. And I think in multi-sport delivery, absolutely critical that we get coaches from different sports interacting with each other so that they can share experiences. Um, so that's great. Um, I'm not really answering your question at all, uh, Laura, because I'm, I'm more just kind of gauging what's, uh, what's being written on the, uh, on the map here. But I think um, there's some good ones that are coming up as we go through. <laughs> Dave, you're not facilitating. You're just doing the activity now. Oh, I know. I know. I'm just, uh, but, uh, but I'm just allowing people to uh, get their, their thoughts down. So I'm, I'm more in that encouraging role of, uh, you know, seeing if we can explore a few more ideas. <laughs> so you're not going to answer my question? Not yet. Not until we get a few more ideas okay. down. That way I'm just okay. putting, I'm putting more pressure on, on everybody else to, to generate the ideas. Um, you know, it's interesting though, as we play this out, I mean, critical thinking you know, it, it depends on maybe the module as well, um, how much critical thinking, uh, you know, may come out in some of the learning activities. Um, but I would hazard a guess that just being in a workshop, you're, you're really critically thinking about what you do to your own, within your own coaching. Um, and many of our modules are set up where you kind of say, this is what I do now. This is my current situation versus uh, this is what I I could change and I'm, I'm actually going to write that one in Laura that's a great idea Dave because uh, there's a great one here stop start and continue and David I, I was just that under valuing I was just going to say it, it's interesting that no one has any idea how to do valuing in in-person delivery 
<laughs> so we didn't have anybody suggesting there. So I was like, this is also a good review of the core competencies for our LFs as well, because that was the only one that had not yet been populated. So thank you for making sure that that is addressed, Dave. It's great. Well, I'm going to pipe populate a few because uh, I mean, obviously, the, the one that really comes through for me in a lot of this is the NCCP um, Code of Ethics. Thanks. Which, you know, really comes out in a lot of the delivery, d despite the modules that you have. For those who don't spend a lot of time on the core competencies, um, and this is a little bit to the Gail's point too, because we don't necessarily I think, especially as you get on into some of the comp dev and beyond modules, you don't spend as much time intentionally commenting them or laying them out. And some of the modules may not even have a slide at the beginning that lays them out anymore. I think that the way, if we're following the learning facilitator guides accurately, which we should be, I put a little comment in that first activity that I think I've said to everybody at least a million times is we, as facilitators in the NCCP, we have flexibility in how we facilitate, not what we facilitate. So if we're following the guides and delivering what we should, all of the activities, and Dave made this point, really they encompass and facilitate the core values So and the core competencies. So all of the activities are designed to be using things like interacting and valuing and leading and giving opportunities for people to do that. So when we go through part of our responsibility as facilitators is really to, to not just acknowledge that, but to keep following those guides because of that purpose too. They, the instructional design behind the NCCP is actually quite, quite impressive. And the reason things are designed the way they are um, because everybody's taken it here, obviously I'll, I'll just jump to the learning facilitator core training course. Um, one of the examples, and I know there's a lot of challenges with Adobe, uh, one of the examples is that one of those very first activities, if you remember, is about drawing the ideal learning facilitator. And it's fun. It's engaging in a classroom. It gets people kind of creative. It's always silly. Uh, there's funny pictures drawn. And I, as a facilitator, it's one of my favorite things to go through and to take facilitators through. Um, it's really hard to have people get the same experience online. And as a uh, online facilitator delivering, you may have a tendency to go and say, well, it's a lot easier just to make a list of the ideal learning facilitator characteristics. But the reason that activity is designed the way it is, is to actually engage a certain part of our brain that allows people to be in a more creative space. And that platforms you into the next activity afterwards that you need to have opened up that part of your brain. If you have people just create a list and actually, whether it's individually or in a breakout room, just list things off and it's kind of like black and white text on a screen, it's a very different impact on the rest of the module. Um, LF core training is probably the one designed so very intentionally, if you understand instructional design and can look at it. Uh, but if not, just know that there is a reason all the activities and the, the structure of our LFs guides are done the way they are, is that it's incredibly purposeful. And since Dave still won't answer my question about, uh, and I still see him doing work because Dave, remember we're seeing your screen, so we know whose answers are yours. Um, the comment about ways to use a platform like this, and again, this is this is a there's a lot going on on this screen and a lot of people engaging, so you may not take people through the same process, but um, you can have people start. You know, it's a, a breakout room. Start on interacting. Give them five minutes to spend on it. And then you kick that breakout room, uh, you know, you can send a broadcast message out that tells them to go on to problem solving. And then they have to build on the work the previous group did. And again, just recognizing there's different ways to engage different learning styles. I think when it comes down to it, almost everything we do in the classroom with the right tools and the right flexibility can actually be done in an online environment. Um, doesn't mean it's easy. And it doesn't mean it's easy to flip screens and interact with the tools. And we have people in our courses who are going to get frustrated with it. So I think we have to make sure we're very confident and comfortable in what we're doing. I just saw the, the drawing at the bottom of the screen. That's amazing, whoever did that. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. I need a hug. You're welcome. That's so cute. <laughs> Chris, oh, that's amazing. I, I, was doing, I was drawing the ideal learning facilitator. Is that right? what it is? That's perfect. Yeah, Thank you. you. Thank you for proving it's possible. That's me. I added the hug. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Laura, I mean, very good comments and, um, you know, I think we all learn by failure. So thank you for pointing out my failure. And I did not do that this activity. Uh, Would have been way worse if I was. Intended I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the adaptations could be uh, that we went back into our three breakout rooms and 
uh, we just sort of carousel through. But I, I do think that that is part of, you know, the online environment is uh, learning how to fail <laughs> and hopefully moving moving forward and, and trying those things. So one of the things Gail has often told a lot of our advanced coaching diploma courses is uh, failure is something like finding another interesting learning upon reflecting the experience. So Gail, thank you, because uh, that's uh, stayed certainly in my head, that little acronym that you have. Um, is that a Gailism, Gail, or, or, or it was that uh, something that you pulled from somewhere else? I think it was something that we created uh, back when the NCIs first started. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one, yeah. I use it all the time because I'm pretty much failing <laughs> in most aspects of my day. Uh, so, yeah. And Dave, I was, I was just going to jump in and say that I think as a, as a facilitator, but even more so online, I think it's really important to be able to laugh at yourself and to be able to laugh at the mistakes that you make um, because I think it sets everybody at ease and it sort of, you know, sets the tone. So I appreciate the fact that you're able to own that and sort of laugh at it because I think that, um, you know, everybody's so new to the online platform and everything is is crazy just in life, but then now your life is just happening outside that other room and we never know the craziness is that's happening behind that door. And so I think that's a really important piece. And I think that's one of the things that actually I've really enjoyed about um, teaching online is the idea that, you know, you're facilitating a discussion, but um, you know, it could just go in some hilarious directions and just to kind of roll with that and laugh with that and, and to kind of, you know, notice. So thank you for doing that, Dave. That was fantastic. So am I off the hook now, Laura? <laughs> Tap into our well-oiled machine. We spent hours rehearsing this. I think one of the things too that's that I'm finding interesting in this is people move around, but I, I wonder whether as you plan out a your activities and if you were in an online environment whether you could put up different pages of the um of the workbook for example up on this correct have you gotten to that state in your own facilitation uh laura i have yeah i am um, i use this tool pretty regularly in my my normal life job not that being an NCCP coach developer doesn't pay full time, but you'll be surprised to know, it's not all I do. Um, and I was saying earlier that the pictures that we have on this mirror board around the screen, we did just to kind of give people things to play with and interact with. Um, I don't know that the NCCP logo is necessarily the most motivational thing, but we put things around the screen that kind of engages people. And we also use things as reference points. Um, mm -hmm. Just gonna see if I could, maybe I won't share it, but anyways, if you're, if you have an online brainstorming session, you're trying to bring in a bunch of tools together. It's sometimes helpful just to say, well, here's a snapshot of a model we've been working from. Here's a reference somewhere I want to jump to quickly. And you just have them all in one space. So it's similar to how you would in a classroom where you've got a book you would just reference and you've got this and you think, Hey, I'm going to throw this in the board to be able to, uh, to talk about if we need to, or as a reminder to talk about. And Laura, now that we've finished such a great mapping here, um, if we wanted to capture that like in stone, so let's mm -hmm. just say our stone is PDF, can we make a PDF of this and then send it out to everybody? Mm -hmm. You can make it. How PDF. do you do that? See, I'm going to teach you, Dave. If you go up to the top of your screen, see that little up arrow? Yep. You could not export it because I own this board because <laughs> it's my work account. Uh, if I was nice enough to give you access to it, you could export it to a spreadsheet as you can see. Uh, and there is ways, the other thing you can do, which is cool is you can print it. So if you made a really cool visual, like a really cute little learning facilitator, which had some great things drawn around them and some big ears and a green shirt, and you really wanted to keep that forever, you can print it out as well. But yes, you can export it as a PDF. 
Uh, we've been doing quite a bit lately with modeling where we're just taking uh, screenshots of the models and putting it into Word documents and that has worked out really well. I think partially because of how visual the tools in this are. So if you, as many of you have been, uh, play around with some of those tools on the left hand side, you can do everything you can anywhere else. You can customize colors, um, shape, sizes, you can put in any of those preset maps, you can draw the arrows that link. Again, none of these tools are the only way to do it. It's a way. It's just introducing you to the idea. It is not absolutely the only way. Uh, this also integrates with a number of platforms as well. Uh, watching the time, I think, Dave, are we, would you be okay if we move along to uh, Jen? Yeah, I don't I think, want her to I feel bad for not getting um, to go. Let's make sure that we have enough time at the end that we can you know, hear from everybody as well on, on some of the, the questions that they may have. So yeah, absolutely. Let's let's get on to to Jen. Perfect. Laura, just very quickly, you mentioned this is your work account. Mm -hmm. uh, is this <laughs> Jimmy, like a, <laughs> of all the <laughs> no no of all the yeah, features? Work for the same people, so nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're not paying anything. Gotcha. Um, one thing to note is pretty much every platform out there you can get not for profit free or really cheap. So if the, if the free platform doesn't work for you, look into an offer profit rate. Slack is a really good one that is currently responding really quick because of the demand on it. That if you want to set up a Slack group and get it upgraded to the standard version, not for profit is uh, getting it free. But this one, yeah, the, yeah, I'm not personally paying for this. This is my, uh, my work platform, but the, as a user, you have like what you're accessing is other than what I just showed you, I won't let Dave print it. And clearly, cause it's Dave, I gave, Jen, full permission, but not Dave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you uh, as a user and as a guest, you have full access to it. So the nice thing is you don't need a whole bunch of people. Everybody doesn't need that platform. But on the free version, it's not far off of this. There's not a whole lot different that uh, yeah. any of these tools we introduce, we intentionally pick that you can do free and do just as much as you would need to. Same with uh, Mentimeter. Menti is the free version works very well for what you need to do for, for workshops. Um, somebody had put in the chat, there's another one called Kahoot, same idea, app on the phone. They're just, they're fun ways to do it, engage people in different platforms. It's probably worth noting, sorry, and Jen, I know we're going to you in a second here. It's worth noting you don't have to do any of this either. Like none of this is needed or mandatory. You're absolutely able to facilitate only through Zoom or whatever the main platform is. Um, but one of the, whatever you're using, whatever platform you're using, having help is really, really useful. So we have four of us trying to make this work tonight, uh, including <laughs> Kevin, and clearly that's still not enough, um, but that could be for other reasons. Uh, but it is always helpful in the same way we love co-delivering as facilitators to ask for support from other people as well. And Catherine just made a note about TechSoup too, has discounts on a lot of tech. Uh, Zoom, I think is actually free right now for not-for-profits through TechSoup. So if you're an organization, not-for-profit organization, you very likely are registered with TechSoup. If you're not, it's very easy to get. Um, and they give not-for-profit or free uh, access to most, a lot of software, like a surprising amount of software. And some hardware. If you're looking for that second monitor. I'll jump in briefly for Viasport and just say that as we look at shifting away from Adobe, um, we will be exploring a few different tools and we'll find ways to try and make those available to, to LFs if we can. Uh, so that's part of the, uh, part of the discovery of new platforms. Clapping logo for shifting away from Adobe, Candice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for those who don't like it. <laughs> All right, Jen. All right. Oh, sorry, Thank Kevin, you. That be good? Should people connect with you? Should they give you feedback, send you a note through Slack if they have like preferences or thoughts about things we can use? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're open to, we're in sort of discovery mode. We just went through like a, about 20 platforms to see what would be the best platform to deliver. And it does seem like Zoom is, uh, or Zoom Pro is becoming one of the options. Um, yeah, so we're, we're still looking at things that we can use to interface with those platforms like Miro Board. And uh, so, yeah, if you have feedback on this or, or any other platform that we should be exploring, then happy to hear that feedback. Or on the private chat conversation that Dave has up on his screen because he's forgotten that he's screen sharing. Yeah, we can talk about it in the Slack uh, technology channel that I started as well. So if you have tech tips or things that you want us to explore, uh, just throw it in the tech chat on, uh, on Slack and we'll, we'll work through it. 
Uh, Jen, can you take over so Dave is no longer screen sharing? Sure. It should be here. Is mine up now? Let's see. Is that it? Can you, you see the... So. You can see the later, next, and now, everybody? You got yes? it. Yes? All right. So thank you. Dave, I got your hint that I shouldn't talk too much. So thank you very much. I, I got that. That was good. So, and yes, it was my group. Um, and it was my technical difficulties that led to our, um, the scribbles and all of that. For some reason, I couldn't get rid of that arrow that dragged around everywhere. So I, I apologize. <laughs> and um, we had a good laugh at it. But um, we're all learning here. Yeah. And again, we were able to laugh at ourselves. And Jody had come up with a really good idea. So I'm, I'm just zooming in here now. But um, I'd added it into our now area with um, what does she feel as a learning facilitator she needs right now to make a difference? And one of that was like easier access to use whiteboards. And so, um, you know, being able to right away get the okay from via sport or whatever our PTCR is to say, yes, it's okay if you use an external whiteboard or yes, it's okay if you use a screen share while we're presenting so that you can um, use the Excel and walk people through the Excel instead of having to use the slides on Adobe, which is quite painful. So um, yeah, so I think that's one of the things that we could do now. Does anyone else have any other ideas of what you think our vision would be for not just us as individual learning facilitators teaching, but also as the whole community of learning facilitators. Because as Laura had just said, like we, we really need to be able to lean on each other. And sometimes it really helps to have two facilitators and, and to be able to work through that. So what are our visions now? What are our visions in the future? Um, feel free to write on any of those sticky notes or add your own or um, just unmute yourself and talk away if you're tired of looking at the screen, Jody, which you've been looking at all day. So. <laughs> um, I think you could, fa in fairness, you could flip that around and just say that I need to learn how to use Adobe Whiteboard properly. Although I will say that I've asked Laura to help me. I've asked Wayne to help me. <laughs> I have still had a couple of epic crash and burns during the actual facilitation. So. I feel like uh, one night I did actually just give up and and like make a Jamboard link because I had to. <gasps> Jamboard's um, another good one. Jody, post when, that to the online chat. Yeah. So no. Okay. The online chat, like on Slack. On Slack. Mm. Online okay. delivery chat. Yes. Okay. So yeah, Google Jamboard. Um, and it seems like even if nobody really knows how to use it, like they can still, if it, as long as all you're asking for is sticky notes, they can manage. Um, so that's the nice thing about that is, you know, I was short on time because I cocked it up so badly. So um, <laughs> Jamboard kind of worked. <laughs> um, I, well, I find the whiteboards can be effective if I actually preset it up a little bit. So I found that I had to go in and like pre-type some sections and get it laid out um, almost like I would have had to on those big pieces of paper that you might post on the wall and then it, it worked, but you're right. I, I found it quite difficult. So um, yeah, good sort of thoughts. Um, we've got ideas. Other people have said, I'm just going to zoom in here so I can see this regular collaboration. Um, with this like this. So um, I love that idea of regularly being able to meet and collaborate and sharing ideas and, and thoughts of, of what people want to be able to do. I, yeah, being, being able to kind of look at online video and how to use it. And Laura, see, here we go again. It's, it won't let me ungrab things. I don't know what it is I'm doing, Laura. I don't know either. One of the things, Jen, I'm, I'll, I'll jump in here, but, um, you know, and it's something that came up in our, our breakout room earlier on was just people's familiarity with online. And, and even if we go back into face-to-face -face delivery, it's kind of like those, those pre-steps before the workshop. 
And I think one of the things that did work out really well when we did our international coaching school this year is we actually uh, had all of the coaches come to a half an hour orientation um, because we were so sort of mm -hmm. fearful that whether or not they would be able to access Adobe Connect. And, and we had two orientations. And in that orientation, we had them test their microphones. We had them do a lot of uh, kind of just simple things to get their themselves a little bit more familiar with the environment. Um, you know, and I think the context around that is that it's it's a big commitment. I mean, most of the people that we have are there for more than two or three days. So doing a little half an hour, you know, orientation a few days beforehand made sense. But I would be curious to see whether or not others might um, do that for their regular delivery um, within the NCCP or, or, or whether we could have just an online video that said, Uh, that would be excellent. Okay. Okay, I know that you're taking an NCCP module. These are the things that you, you know, to prepare yourself. I'm getting a fair bit of lag here on you guys. If I, if I sound a bit odd, I'm going to pause the kids Wi-Fi so they can't um, go in. Meanwhile, I think it's actually Dave's Wi-Fi is a little bit stalled. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, but so I, I really like that idea, Dave. I found that if everyone, every participant in the workshops that I've been in had some sort of headset, then life would have been so much easier because I've probably spent, you know, the first 10 minutes of each workshop with those few people that sign in late going, okay, so you have a lot of feedback. Can you find a microphone? Can you find some sort of headset? So, um, yeah, actually, I think as maybe an intro to on, maybe they should have to do an intro to online NCCP prior to taking an NCCP course online. And it's just a, you know, 15, half an hour, you know, sort of fun, something or other. Yeah, I, I like that idea. So the idea maybe is, is next, um, not just an orientation online, but an orientation to online for LFs and for participants. I think that's an awesome idea. Um, we have here gather the best practices and share with certain technologies. I, I think the Slack will allow us to do that. So we could even maybe move that sticky down to now with the idea that, that you know, with us using Slack, we can share things like Jamboard and, and all these other ideas. And Jennifer Gibson showed us Padlet, uh, which, is, which is really great as well. Um, practicing the tools. So being able to come and practice these tools with people that it, it's okay if we mess up in, you know, because maybe we're not paying for the course. I feel bad when people are paying for the course and, and things go wrong. So um, I love the idea of regular collaboration like we're doing right now. Do we have any big picture ideas? So let's see, we've got sort of debrief and check practices to ensure consistency. All right, so that's a great thought in terms of being able to come back and say, okay, I'm teaching this course online. Is it working? Uh, I've seen that a little bit right now with Make Ethical Decisions. Lots of the LFs are finding that people are coming back to them and saying they have problems with the online evaluation. And so are we able together as a group to debrief and, and do that? That's a great sort of thought or idea. Um, what else do we have around here? Now, I noticed we don't have any, you know, really good picture which means it's getting close to the end of the night. Um, <laughs> but um, any other sort of ideas or thoughts, breakout modules into smaller times? Yes. So making them, you know, a couple of hours max sort of to do. I think I, I've done a four hour stretch, which was just far too long. Um, so yeah, breaking them up sounds like a fantastic idea. All this is really good feedback for Kevin and I'm sure he's taking notes. Maybe Candace, he can borrow yours, um, if he gets a chance to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any Jen, other um, Jen, can I add one? Please, Jennifer. Okay. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the other Jens. Um, so we, we, so I, um, facilitate speeding courses as well. And this summer we did a tri couple trial ones with, um, I, so we talk about like, we always do co-deliveries, right? Um, in order to start facilitating. 
um, we ha within our cohort here, there's some amazing, very experienced um, facilitators. And there's some of us that have we facilitated a little bit, but not as much as maybe we'd like to. And what we tried was we had a two person team and it worked really well um, because one was able to manage the chat. So I found mm -hmm. like, especially when you might not be super comfortable with the content um, and trying to fumble your way through in all these new different platforms and, and jumping around, I found it really cool to be um, almost as a co-facilitator team have one person as a lead, but one sort of managing that background stuff, it really works. And I think if we are gonna be facilitating more online, which we are, this may be something that we consider doing more often just to help alleviate that little bit of stress that's being put on our facilitator shoulders of, okay, did I catch that? Did I miss that? Because there's always someone being like hands up and they're sitting there for a while or you're not gonna, you'll get that engagement, I think a little bit more. I think I'm seeing everyone nod. <laughs> Everyone's like, definitely, yes. Like, yeah, Are you and, hearing and, this, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. I would love to be able to facilitate with someone experienced just to learn to, or I take a lead and they sit in the background. It's almost like being, I guess, our evaluations too, right? That we all have to do. Um, but it, it's just more opportunity to collaborate with each other. Yeah, at that I, I think that is one of the best ways to learn is to work with other people and and even people that are deemed as experienced or inexperienced, sometimes they just do it with a different lens and that opens up a whole new option of ideas that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So um, I know it's valuable sort of going both ways for sure. Um, let's see. So on that note quickly, sorry, in on another provincial program we work with, like if we kind of are training someone they'll be the tech person in the background to deal nice. with the tech issues while the actual kind of practice facilitator does the facilitation so they can learn both aspects like dealing with tech but also listening to the facilitation I don't know good if work option, around but. yeah great idea I, I all, all of those are really good thoughts yeah and jennifer i think and uh, and not use that like a stop gap but use that ongoing because every successful um, online um, uh, Zoom call that I've ever been on has always had two people, either a mod, we call them modifiers um, and presenter, but every one of them uh, that's been successful has had two people minimum. Yeah. Yeah. The moderator uh, role is really helpful. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. It, very thoughtful as well. Yeah. There had been some discussion about the idea of having more of these, maybe less crazy platform all over the place, but just the idea of getting learning facilitators together. Full. Am I cutting out? That, that, I think that's uh, check, check. I think it's Jen's Wi-Fi. That's okay. Yeah, I'll just jump into you and say that these are LF labs are something that we would like to do. Um, at least uh, semi-annually, if not quarterly. Um, so that's something that uh, we hope will improve the, the overall experience for all coaches that we're helping to develop, but uh, also just to create a better and more rich community of LFs in BC. I, yeah, think, I think that, that having that Slack platform too is gonna be huge for just like, it's, it's user driven, right? It's driven by all of us and it's that community piece to be able to share and ask for help and support and, and just, put ideas in. So I think that'll be pretty key. We've always had such a strong group of learning facilitators in the province. I think it's a really good opportunity to take that, you know, when we get together at whether it's, you know, coach developer conferences, we're always so excited to see each other and learn from each other, but they're far and few between even in the normal time. So let's take advantage of the online environment and keep this going. Yeah. Um, so I think that leads us really well into sort of a, a final discussion. Did anybody put anything else on this board before we roll away from it? I don't think so. I, I think that's it. Maybe we should all get one good last look at our, our good learning facilitator um, with big shoes and they have to wear green. I like this. Excellent. <laughs> all right. So should we now head into the final wrap up session, Kevin and Laura and Dave? I think so. 
seems like a good idea. I will stop sharing. Um, and I, I honestly can't quite remember what our final wrap up session was. I assume it was something very brilliant, but I'm going to redirect us unless somebody can tell me what I'm missing. Um, is just back to the Slack channel to, to take a last chance to go in just while we're here online together. Set the other tools aside. You've had a bit of an experience and exposure to them. If you're interested to hear more, please do so. Um, there's a couple chats I just started in the online delivery thread, which remember how we said about replying to threads other than Dave who is replying with random comments um, just to keep things a bit organized. Candace made at a point, a point at the beginning that the Zoom ideas were just coming too fast and furious. So let's just share them. Let's keep them in the chat together. If you have ideas about the way things work, um, I'll put them in there together. There was a chat that just went into the thread about the idea of having from Chris, which is a great suggestion, labs specific to the course. So I think that's where the, those individual workshop chats and I'll, maybe I'll just share my Slack again. Um, the individual workshop threads are gonna be really key. So if you facilitate making ethical decisions, which I know a lot of people do, so I'm going to use that as an example, then here's a chance to go in and just send a message to all the MED facilitators and say, hey, does anybody want to get together for, you know, an online chat about this? A lot, there's a lot of changes with this module, as with many, um, you know, Thursday afternoon at four, anybody want to chat about how this delivery is going? Um, I think that this is, again, the part where we can't just put it on via sport. This is why they've created this platform is for us to be able to engage in it as well. And Slack does do, and I'm pretty sure this version does it, um, allows us to actually have conversations from here. So you can just hit starting a conversation and it'll go ahead and do it. So if you click on the right hand side, you can say call and it will actually, <laughs> don't do it right now, but call all 46 members uh, if people want to be in a group. But obviously if they're not at their computer, they just won't answer. Um, but it does allow for video calling and everything right within this platform. So this is our, this is our opportunity, right? This is our chance to share this stuff and you know, if you facilitate teaching and learning next week and you use a really cool tool and set up a board for it, share it with everybody. Let them see what you did or you record a piece or take a screenshot of what you did. Um, this is where we drive it as facilitators in the province and we get to make what we want of it as we go forward. Thoughts? And there wasn't, I think, as much big group chat as we were excited to have. Um, thoughts about people's where we go from here as facilitators and as the BC team. The other thing I think, Laura, we were going to share was um, good stories about sort of positive things that have mm. happened to you while you were delivering online and um, maybe some humorous things up. that we were going to do. So if anyone has any good stories they would like to share, I think it was story time. Dave had a good one, I think. Yeah, other than the, um, the, the, the failures that I've had tonight, I mean, Certainly, yes, there's been um, a number of situations where uh, technology is uh, uh, um, challenging. Um, one of the little ones that I'll point out, is, and I had this on one of my videos, but when you share your screen from, you know, sec, when you share your screen from Zoom, uh, there's a couple of little control knobs at the bottom um, that says you can share your computer sound or you can optimize screen sharing for video video clip. Um, so this works very well if you are actually sharing video. Uh, so like even in the MED module where we have uh, prescribed video and you want to be able to share that over Zoom. I mean, it does work out really well in sharing some video, but I, I did have one where I was able to click the optimized screen share and I found that all of my participants um, ended up having to uh, see little tiny squares. So it didn't work. It wasn't absolutely optimized. So uh, it took me probably about 10 or half the session to figure out that that was not uh, <laughs> going very well. But some of the challenges that I've, I've run into just in, you know, troubleshooting technology and, you know, failing to, um, to learn and learning. I have, a, I have a little story, but it's not a, a funny one. It was a uh, great doing a co-facilitation with Jen. It was uh, on my first MED 
and trying to figure everything out. And she was so supportive. She sent me all of her information in advance. And I still was nervous as all get out, but she walked me through it. And then we had someone else in addition online learning for a different situation. So poor Jen's going back and forth between helping me out and helping this other person out. And at one point, I think your mic was on and you were sharing it with the group somehow. So yes, another technical situation, but it was really great that she helped me out and uh, co-facilitation for sure. <laughs> I forgot about that one. There's been so many times where I've been, you know, we've come back from break and when you're using Adobe, if when you step back in, it doesn't unmute you. And so there's been so many times where I'm like going on for like a good two minutes and everyone's like, are we starting soon in the chat? Um, I, I also shared that um, one time while I was teaching a course, my computer updated. So it like shut down and I was like, no. And so the whole thing shut down. And so, but everybody stayed online and they just hung out and <laughs> I came back into the main meeting room and we continued on and had a good laugh. Um, and I've also had all the power go out in a Whistler when I was teaching a course and I had like three participants that just disappeared all of a sudden <laughs> and we didn't know where they went, but they had all lost power. So they lost their internet connection and um, yeah, so um, I think that that's kind of the part you just have to laugh at. But then the other piece is I've also taught people that are, you know, in Newfoundland or whatever. So it's amazing that you can all come together from all these different places. So I think the, some of the advantages of online are really fun too. I think one of the challenges, um, uh, with online is, um, making sure that in terms of a classroom, you can kind of see what's going on in the classroom, but when you're doing it um, um, uh, online, it makes it that much more difficult to uh, kind of see what everybody's doing um, online. I know that um, we had requested that everybody have their video on. This was a, uh, I did a lacrosse clinic um, online and uh, uh, wanted to make sure that um, it's about, because in the end, what we want to do is make sure that they're trained that, 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 that the training has, you know, has taken some effect. And um, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do online as opposed to uh, doing it in the classroom where you can walk around, see what they're writing in their workbooks and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. And I think the, um, uh, the online is um, a lot more difficult to gauge whether or not there was learning taking place. And uh, it's, uh, it's probably just a challenge that we'll have to live with. But um, um, personally, I can't wait to get back to the classroom. Um, one benefit uh, for us living up here in the north is we have lots of small communities that are really hard to reach and so this online option I think has a really big benefit for um, rural communities and coaches that maybe can't travel or um, it's just hard to do they, they have this online option I think it's really exciting for the people we work with up here in the north. For those of us who don't live in the north too, we're always really happy to uh, pair up with you guys. It's a lot easier now that we're remote. It's trickier when we were trying to get a flight up to do it. So um, I think that's Slack's going to do that too. Is gets rid of those boundaries as well, which is awesome. I can definitely uh, attest to the fact that that's not just appreciated in the north. It's also <laughs> appreciated in the far east of the province, where some people think that I live in Alberta. <laughs> we would know. never put that on you, Jody. No, I know. I left. I'm not going back. Kevin, how many people were not able to be here tonight? Like what, we have a good team in front of us. How many people, I, there's about 80 people or so, I think in the, in Slack? Uh, yeah, I think there's about uh, 72 people. I think it's 72 people in Slack. And then uh, tonight there was 33 people registered and I didn't get the final count on today, but it looks like we're about 24, 25. And then I've had a few Viasport, people come in and out. <laughs> okay, and the Viasport coaching team is in Slack too, right? So if we have, 
like I know you and Katie have been awesome being able to just actually I had a, a problem with a core course last week and just sent Katie a quick Slack chat and she replied instantly, which was very appreciated because I almost lost my mind with Adobe. Um, you, you guys are good with us doing quick messages like that keeps email freed up a little bit. That seemed yeah. to work out well. Absolutely. Like whatever your preferred method of communication is, we're like, I think you get, the Slack channel will help you as a group solve a lot of problems internally, but anything you need to escalate, you can either get us either in Slack or uh, on email. I'm a little bit more email, Katie and uh, the coach, um, our intern at, for the coach at via sports uh, are monitoring the Slack chat the most, and they'll probably be the most helpful in terms of like immediate response and delivery. Uh, but for larger questions, for sure, I'm monitoring it probably two or three times a week. And That's uh, awesome. yeah, so feel free, reach out. And we're, I'm now just putting ideas out there and basically signing you on to them. But um, were you going to either include the Dropbox link or in each of those channels, the actual manuals so that we don't have to be kind of searching around for the newest versions anymore? That's a good one. I will check with Katie. <laughs> that wasn't a passive aggressive question. <laughs> it was a, uh, hey, here's an idea. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I think if it can kind of be a one-stop shop, I know from my point of view, it's really handy if it's all in one space. Um, the fact that we can have those conversations, ask questions, have the support from each other and access, access the resource and tools we need, that's, uh, it's pretty huge. For sure, and I'll definitely drop the web recording of, uh, the web link to this recording uh, in the Slack under the VSport okay. announcements channel. And I put a link to the Miro board in there too, so I'll, I don't know, as long as that account's open, I'll just leave it there. If anybody wants to go in and play around, you're welcome to. Or review the outstanding artwork that went into there. Does anybody have any sort of immediate needs? Things like the easy access to the manuals that we can add on Slack that might be helpful for each person? I'm, I'm sort of thinking maybe the video links, like I know the newest video links are also on YouTube. I wonder if we have a links to those because I've, I've heard a couple of people complain about not being able to access those quite easily. So I think maybe the video links for a couple of the courses would, would be good. Video links would be super helpful if they're already on YouTube. I tend to repeat that step. So it'd be great if I didn't have to. I have a question about um, using the online books instead of hard copies. Uh, it, when even delivering in-person courses, I've had situations where I have candidates showing up at my course without a laptop or an iPad or a phone to use to bring up their, their, um, their manual, but also they don't have access to using the worksheets that are in the manual. Um, is there any way of having the manuals um, be able to type in those worksheets instead of having them handwritten? Sorry, I I'm not sure if anyone's going to answer that. <laughs> I'll yeah, jump in. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> um, Come on. I, I know the ones that I've done, the, the PDF, the coach workbooks are fillable PDFs and the coaches have been pretty successful of entering them in and being able to save them. Um, I never had book them, the, maybe I've got old copies. The PDFs aren't, aren't fillable in the ones that I have. Yeah. So, so the new ones definitely are. Um, I, I don't know, Kevin or Laura, if there's any that aren't new that have been made fillable because I, I think they all have um the and they know of them, if not all okay and the lf guides are fillable too now so you like the section to write in your own tips and and feedback yeah. is fillable too but i think that that links to our point about <laughs> making sure we have the most recent manuals and obviously that's a it's a responsibility on via sport to keep that up to date i guess because they have access to the, the cac back end with them but yeah just I know I, I used to always download all my manuals onto my, like I'd have them on my laptop and just use them. And yeah. I just consistently have out of date manuals. So I've just deleted yeah. everything off. And when I go to teach a course, I go grab the new manuals and whatever they are, go from there. Cause it just, I was in the same boat. Oh, as you. I see. Okay. I, 
I actually found to um, if you go to teach an online course, the people at Viasport will send you the email that goes out to all the participants. And I always open the workbooks from there because then I know I'm using the exact same one they are mm. just in case I'm like, well, what if they don't have the most recent one and I'm like one ahead or something. So I always use the one that gets emailed out to them. And that way I know I'm working off the exact same one that they have. But, right. um, and I mean, you know, the folks at Viasport are great. So they usually got it down pat so they get the right one. Okay, well, I don't teach the online um, at this point, but um, the in-person ones, I guess, that, that I've done in the past, I must uh, get the new, newest version and then I'll, then it'll be good. Yeah, Catherine, I just wanted to uh, echo what you're saying about that. One of the um, issues that I had in the classroom with um, 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 having them with um, uh, not having the physical manuals uh, was that because the uh, the reference material and the workbook were separate, trying to flip back and forth on a phone in a classroom was um, extremely difficult. And I think that the uh, uh, the way that um, the uh, NCCP has gone with uh, making the reference material in the workbook one book, I think that's going to go a long way to solving that problem. I had heard that Viasport was actually buying all of us new iPads to be able to facilitate from. I don't know if anybody else heard that. <laughs> I'd love that. That would be wonderful. You need my address to send it to? <laughs> I, I believe Kevin wants everybody to call him directly just to talk through that, that challenge. If you can just put it in Slack as a request, Thank then you, it'll probably Kevin. happen. <laughs> On his personal <laughs> cell phone as well. In the yeah. Like late at night, write it about what, what time does your son go to bed? About nine? That's when the phone should start ringing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Perfect. need all the hours of sleep I can get. <laughs> Um, Boy, Kevin, I know weekend. you're going to give a bit of a, a closing here. I'm just looking at the hour. I just want to oh, yeah. say this was fun. Uh, Dave and Jen and I really enjoyed doing this and we had a fun time connecting leading up. But I do want to say uh, we're all really excited that you're in this job because it's been a long time since we did anything kind of coach developer related. We know there's been lots of change at Viasport, but I think this is a, it's a big opportunity and thank you to you for, for initiating this and coming up with the idea and kicking it off. So uh, just on behalf of everybody, thank you for that. Yeah, not a problem. I, I, we want to do the most we can at Viasport to try and engage uh, the people who are delivering courses on our behalf. And uh, I think that it, this engagement has been great for me. It's been a key learning uh, in my development. I'm used to being on the other side where I'm developing coaches within a PSO to deliver excellence programming for Dave. Um, and now I'm flipping the script and figuring out how to uh, develop those coaches from the multi-sport angle and uh, I've appreciated this conversation and I hope you have too. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more of these and uh, yeah the, the idea was really to bring people together and uh, to share best practices so I hopefully we can do that in, uh, in this type of format again and uh, thank you. I think that's it folks you can get on to having a real drink since it's actually the evening now. That's right it's <laughs> beer you. o'clock. Well, it's be a second drink. <laughs> it's later for Jody. You have to remember that. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, everybody. It's great. Bye. 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 Good to see everybody. Bye, Kathy. Thanks for taking the time. Bye, everybody. It's just you and I, Kevin. <laughs>